D&D number two, Suffer the Children in Jesus' Name, chapter 14. Toby hung up the phone. It made no sense. The Caroline he knew would not have gone to stay with friends. She would have stayed at the hotel where he could reach her, and she certainly wouldn't have spoken those particular words to the hotel clerk. Something was terribly wrong. He dialed the number at Eugene Center. Hey, Toby, how's it going? Eugene asked cheerfully, though his expression fell when Toby explained the bad feeling he had. No, Toby, we haven't seen her since Friday night, not since the party. She said she was going over to the apartment to pack. We just figured she'd been too busy to stop by. Well, can you run over there and see what you can find out? You got it. Call me on my cell. Toby dialed the cell number he was given. I'm headed up the stairs right now, Eugene stated. The door's not locked. The place is clean. Boxes are packed. Caroline? Carol, are you here? He paused. She's not here, Toby. I'm going to check the park. You call Madame Pierre. Toby dialed Madame. No, Toby, Madame said, frowning. I haven't seen her since Friday night. Maybe she went shopping. No, what am I saying? Our Caroline does not shop. You have me worried now, Toby. I will contact some of her friends. Call me back in a little while. We? Oui? Yes, I will. Thanks. New scene. Lieutenant Veranza, Sherry asked nervously. Yes, this is Veranza. Sherry? Yeah, it's me. How you doing, Sherry? I don't know. She was silent. Sherry, is there something you want to talk about? Yeah. Okay, shoot. She giggled. Did I say something funny? No, it's okay. What do you want to talk about, Sherry? Um, well, like, have you ever done something wrong? Something you wish you could take back, but you don't know how to get out of it? He was silent. What did you do, Sherry? I knew you'd pull that policeman crap on me, she complained. No, wait, Sherry. Okay, okay, yes, I did. What did you do? I stole a radio from the store. How did you get out of it? I didn't. I took it back to the store owner and apologized. I had to face up to what I did. He told me I had to work for him for two months or he was going to turn me into the police. He made it very hard on me, but it was a good lesson about standing up and doing the right thing. Sherry thought a moment. Hmm. So, even though you did something wrong, everything turned out for the best. Do you think that applies to everyone? Yes, it does. At least it does when I have something to say about it. We all make mistakes, but facing what we do is the very best thing in the world. And even after you stole something, you still got to be a cop. Yes. So, do you want to tell me what this is all about? She was silent. Sherry? No, not now, but thanks. She hung up. In the morning, she just might go down and let Caroline out of the basement. It would be the best thing she could do. She could make it right, and Caroline would be so happy. She sort of liked the idea that she had the power to make Caroline sad, and now she had the power to make her happy, if she wanted. New scene. Toby called Eugene again. He had a bad feeling gnawing at his gut, and Eugene didn't make it any better. Toby, me, Rosie, Irene, Alice, and Madame Pierre have searched everywhere. We've contacted all of Caroline's friends that we know, and no one has seen her since Friday. Not anyone. Oh, Lord Jesus, where could she be? He drew a deep breath. I was able to get a flight. A late flight out. I'll be there before you open the diner in the morning. And I'm calling the police. Maybe by the time you get here, she'll show up and say, why was everyone so worried about me? And she'll laugh and we'll threaten to give her a spanking and send her to her room and all will be well. Yeah, maybe, Toby agreed, but he didn't feel it. New scene. Caroline was humming in the dark. Sherry hadn't come back the rest of the day, and Caroline wished that she'd accepted that snack cake when she'd had the chance. That was a stupid mistake, young lady, she muttered, stopping her song to speak the words out loud. Without delay, she went back to her humming. 
She began with classical pieces and was now on show tunes. At the moment, she was doing summer lovin'. She moved her fingers along the floor as if they were dancing, even though she couldn't see them. Maybe in the morning, when there was more light, she would get up and do some dancing herself, go through some of the routines she knew, maybe in the morning. Right now, she didn't feel like it. She felt weak and dizzy, a little nauseated, which was silly because she hadn't eaten anything in days. She took a moment to tilt the Coke can up again. Maybe there was one more drop that clung to its insides, but no. Caroline moved on to another song, one of Toby's. She hummed first and sang the words about a lost love. She giggled. Her current situation would make a great song. He's going to make a million on this one. Surely he'll write about it, about his Caroline and how he found her and lost her again. I'll make sure he writes about it. She pulled the tab off the coke and began to scratch a message to him on the concrete floor. Placing her finger carefully below each letter as she scratched its form, she was careful not to overlap the letters and words in the dark. It was supposed to be a short message. Toby, write a song about us. I love you, Caroline. Somehow, though, it grew longer and more involved. She told him to forgive Sherry and to see that she gets help. She told him she would do her best without him on the other side and that she would look after him. She told him to find another love and to not feel guilty about that. And she told him over and over how much she loved him. She was humming again and smiling when the door opened. She looked up, squinting, as golden light filtered into the room. Toby? Yes, darling, it's me. She reached for him. Oh, Toby, I didn't think you'd ever find me. How did you find me? He knelt down beside her. Nothing could keep me away from you. He raised her chin for a kiss, just as he always did. What's this? Oh, I hit my chin on the wall. It doesn't matter now, though. Of course it matters. <clears throat> I never want you to hurt. I'll make it all better. He kissed her sweetly and softly. Goodness, he said, sniffing loudly. You smell awful. Would you like to take a long, hot bubble bath? I would love to. Soon, okay? I hate that you have to see me this way. Oh, princess, it's just so good to see you. We've been looking for you everywhere. Really? He touched her nose. Yes, really. But I have you now. He sat next to her, his back against the wall, and pulled her close. Sleep, princess. I've got you. She smiled as she snuggled up close to him. It was heaven being in his arms. Heaven. New scene. Toby stood in the door of Caroline's apartment, the early light of morning drifting through the curtainless window. He rubbed his hands over his face and tried to push the sick feeling out of his mind. Everything was packed. Six small boxes sat neatly stacked, too high, on the worn sofa. The floor had been swept and scrubbed, but the ominous blood stain remained. Two large boxes stood at the entrance to the kitchen, filled with the things Caroline would give away. They were taped shut the roll of tape lying on top. The tiny kitchen was empty, cabinets washed down, floor spick and span. He went through into the bedroom and bathroom. Bedroom was barren, bathroom spotless and empty. He sat on the bed. Where are you? He muttered aloud. He stood and went back into the living room and stared out the window toward Eugene's. A light came on in the diner and Toby headed out. Caroline's downstairs neighbor sat on the steps as he came down. Sherry, yeah, that was her name. Hello, he said to her softly. Hi, she answered. Sherry, isn't it? She smiled at the handsome man. Yep, that's me. And you're Caroline's boyfriend, aren't you? Yes, I am. Have you seen Caroline? She frowned as she thought. I saw her the other day. She said she was moving. Is that true? That's right. Where to? Nashville. You say you saw her the other day? Uh-huh, she confirmed. What day was that? Um, maybe Friday, or it might have been Saturday. You haven't seen her since then? I don't think so. All the way to Nashville, huh? That's a long way. 
Listen, this is important. If you see her, please tell her to go to the hotel and wait for me there. Can you do that for me? Sure, she smiled at him. Thanks, hon. I'd really appreciate it. He ran across the street to the diner, and Sherry frowned as she watched him go. Well, that complicated matters. He was cute and all, but he would probably be really mad at her when he finds out what she did. Then again, Lieutenant Varanza said it would be a hard thing to do, doing what's best. She needed to think some more. Eugene greeted Toby as he came through the door. Anything? Toby shook his head. Where could she be? Rosie touched Toby's hand. It's not like her. You know that, and I know that. We've got to find her. I went to the police. They had me file a missing persons report. He shook his head. I'm going to go down to see Lieutenant Baranza. I realize he's a homicide detective, but he really likes Caroline, and I think he'll help. He turned just as Alice and Irene came through the door. They weren't smiling. We used the whole night to try to listen to the streets and see if anyone knows anything, but there is no dirt out there, not on Caroline, Irene said. Toby ran a hand through his hair. He was beginning to admit to himself that Caroline really is missing. It's not just a case of getting wires crossed or baseless worries. She's gone, vanished. No one has seen her in days. Please, God, he begged as he left the diner, headed for the precinct. New scene. What's all this? Sherry asked, kneeling down on the floor to read it better. When Caroline didn't answer her, she went to her and shook her awake. Caroline looked up groggily. Toby? Caroline giggled. Uh, no, it's me. Caroline struggled to sit up, found she couldn't, and laid back down. Sherry watched her. You don't look so good. What's all that black stuff in your hair? I hit my head. I read what you wrote here to your boyfriend. It's real sweet. You said I was a good kid. You said I didn't mean to hurt you. That will help me a lot. Caroline only nodded. She couldn't think straight. Her head was pounding. Water. She really needed some water. Did you bring me some water today? She asked. Uh-uh. I forgot. I'll get some and bring it back down to you. Here, let me look at your head so I can see how bad it is. She examined it. That's a lot of blood. It kind of reminds me of George, she said in jest, but got no response from her prisoner. She sat next to Caroline and pulled her head over to lie on her lap and dug her fingers through the matted, dried mess to find the cut. It didn't seem so bad. She left Caroline's head there on her lap and stroked her hair. Caroline allowed her the act. She didn't have the energy to resist anyway. I was going to let you out this morning, Sherry began, speaking softly. I still might. Caroline sniffed. Shh, it's going to be okay. It's just there is a slight problem, and I don't know what to do about it. You see, your boyfriend showed up this morning. Caroline raised her head and searched the girl's face. Sherry pushed Caroline's head aside and stood up. And I think he's going to cause a bunch of trouble. He's looking for you. He seems big time worried that he can't find you. Did you talk to him? Caroline asked softly. Yeah, he's really cute, isn't he? Caroline nodded. To know that big, strong Toby was so close made every cell in her body cry out for him. She peered hopefully at her captor. Are you going to let me out, Sherry? I think so. I just need to figure out how. Well, just open the door and I'll walk right out. Sherry was unconvinced. I don't know. Caroline wanted to scream at her in frustration. She wanted to beg. She wanted to shake some sense into her, but she knew that would get her nowhere, and so she tried to calm herself. I'm trying to figure out how I can be the one to... Sherry began. Caroline tried to decipher what the girl was getting at. It was so hard to think with the bass drum that was pounding in her brain. The one to what? The one to save me? Sherry smiled. You really are very good at sorting out feelings, aren't you? Sherry, maybe I can help you come up with a plan, but I'm having a hard time thinking because I need some water and some food. Okay, I'll get you something and we can talk some more. Caroline nodded as Sherry disappeared. New scene. 
Lieutenant Veranza and Sergeant Summers arrived at the precinct at the same time. Morning, Summers grumbled. How's it going? Veranza answered. You feeling puny today? He shook his head. Need coffee. We're out at home. I need coffee. Must have coffee. Hold on there, son. Veranza laughed. We'll fix you up. They headed to the break room. Mugs in hand, they ambled back toward their desk in the squad room, but were stopped by a fellow officer. You guys have a visitor, and I get the feeling it's not going to be a happy reunion. She motioned toward the large man who sat in a chair opposite Lieutenant Veranza's desk. He looked beaten down and defeated, and the lieutenant told him so as he greeted him and shook his hand. Toby, what's wrong? Toby nodded at Summers as he shook Veranza's hand. I need help. What can we do? The lieutenant asked as they took a seat. Toby heaved a sigh. Caroline's missing. Missing? For how long? He knew he could depend on the detective to take him seriously. No one has seen her since Friday night. It's just not like her. I was out of town, and she wasn't there to take my calls. Well, maybe she went to visit friends, Summers offered. Toby shook his head. She would have been there. You have to believe me. She wouldn't have gone away for three days without talking to me first. Something's happened to her. I went to the police, but all they had me do was file a report. Believe me, she wouldn't go anywhere without me. I believe you, Lieutenant Baranza said. He was getting a very bad feeling, and his most recent phone call from Sherry Price was playing through his mind. Do you know what her plans were while you were out of town, Summers asked. She went to a party the day I left. That was Friday. I spoke to her that night on the phone at the hotel. Saturday morning, she planned to go over to the apartment to pack up the place. You guys are leaving? Yes, we're getting married. We're moving to Nashville to my farm. You've got to find her. Sergeant Summers was beginning to feel a little panicky himself. She went to the apartment alone? Yes. She said she'd be okay. It was sort of creepy, but she could handle it. After all, George was dead. There was no danger. The detectives exchanged glances. What? Toby demanded. What are you not telling me? Veranza sighed. The little girl George was having an affair with? She's a mess. She's got it in her mind that Caroline is the cause of all her troubles. She blames Caroline for everything wrong in her life, for George's death, for everything. Toby ran a hand through his hair. Well, I spoke with her this morning. She seemed okay enough to me. I mean, heck, she's just an innocent kid. Uh, She's not innocent in any way, Summers assured him as they rose. Come on, I want to get a warrant and search Sherry's apartment. What are you thinking? You actually think this kid would do Caroline harm? Well, I hadn't thought that until now, and we could be wrong, but I don't want to leave any stone unturned. Veranza's eyes met Toby's. We'll find her. And that is the end of chapter 14.